to the grooming portion of today's lesson. This is Captain. He is going to be our demo for grooming. I'm Miss Molly, in case we forgot names. We have Gail over here as well. So we're going to show all of you what we use to groom, how we use the tools to groom, but more importantly, let's talk about why we groom first. So our horses love to be groomed. It's rewarding to them, it's relaxing to them, it's also relaxing to us as the person grooming the horse. Um, we get to bond with the horse when we're doing this activity. Um, it builds trust when we're able to touch them all the way from the neck, back to the tail, down their legs. They get to learn that we're a safe person, we get to learn that the horse has a good personality, maybe doesn't like to be groomed in certain areas, but it's a great way that we can learn about them. In addition though to the emotional aspect of grooming, it's a health benefit to the horses. We are applying pressure to the coat, which is going to bring more blood flow to the skin and be healthy for the skin, as well as spread the oils throughout the fur and be healthier for the fur. So their coats grow depending on the time of year the same way that a dog or a cat's might. Right now we are in shedding season. So on the ground, we have a whole bunch of fur that I have already pulled off Captain because I think it's so fun. Um, but that's because of the increased daylight hours that we're having. Um, so horses lose their fur. We start to get more tan when we're in the sun. It's just our body's way of reacting to the change of seasons. So we're going to start going over the different brushes. They each serve a different purpose. So we have a lot of brushes right here on the ground. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six of them. Um, and each of them are gonna do something different. Now, these aren't all of the brushes that you can use on a horse. These are just the brushes that we're going to be using in the springtime. So they might change throughout the year, but right now, this is what we use. So for Captain right now, since he's shedding in the spring, we're going to start by using this shedding block. So it's firm. <laughs> it's going to pull the hair, the loose hair, off of his body painlessly. <laughs> but it's going to help him feel lighter and cooler <laughs> as we pull all the hair off. Um, you would use this everywhere except for the face and the legs. Anytime you're grooming, you're going in the direction that the fur grows. So I'm going to be pulling back towards his tail when I'm on his neck. His shoulder, the hair kind of goes downward, so I'm brushing downward and you can see every time I pull there's hair coming off and floating into the wind or Captain's poor food. Sorry buddy. <laughs> on his barrel, which is all of this part of his body, the hair is going to come down towards the ground and slightly back. Right in here, where his barrel meets his hind end, the hair grows in all different directions. It's like a little um, pinwheel. And then on his hind end, it's all coming down his back leg. So it's important to go in the direction that the fur grows for the same reason that we wouldn't want someone petting our hair in the wrong direction. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> So he doesn't want us shoving his fur around. We want this to be enjoyable for him so that he gets the benefits of grooming emotionally as well. So that's the shedding block. Now we have a curry comb. Typically, this would be the first brush we would use in warmer seasons. Right now, as it's warming up, we wanna get the hair off. But the purpose of the curry comb is to loosen up any mud, or dirt that's caked on your horse. So picture a rainy day, your horse goes rolling in the mud, having a good time. The next day's dry, you pull the horse in and they are covered in mud. This happens a lot. So this is going to loosen all of that off the horse for you by making little circles on the horse. So right now, Captain's not muddy. Um, he does still roll, he's 34 years old. He does still roll, he's a good boy, very, very active in the field. Um, but he's not very muddy right now. So this would be used the same places that we would use, a lot of fur, 
same places we would use the shutting block. So we're not gonna do the face, we're not gonna do the legs, those are more bony areas. We're not gonna do the spine, bony areas, but neck, shoulder, barrel, hind, we can do all of that. So that's the curry comb. Now, once you've done the curry comb, all of that loose dirt and mud, pieces of hay, anything that's out in the field, are still going to be on your horse. So this isn't getting it on the ground, this is just loosening it. So after you use the curry comb, you're going to use the hard brush. So this is very stiff. It's typically plasticky. Those are the ones that you're going to get most of the time. They're not, they don't super want to bend. They're not moving around. Whew, this is a dirty brush. <laughs> so the hard brush is always going to have the stiff bristles. Some bristles are very soft. This would be the soft brush. We're gonna use this second after this and I'll tell you why. But we're gonna start with the hard brush. So people typically ask which one's which, you can feel it. That's gonna be the difference most of the time. So for the hard brush, I loosened up all that dirt and now I wanna get it off the horse and onto the ground. So in the direction that the fur grows, this is gonna be a sweeping motion onto the ground. So I'm not gonna do his neck right now because he's eating and I already got some of his hair and his food, but I'm gonna sweep in the direction that the fur grows and notice that I'm flicking everything off. So even when with the shedding of the hair, it's coming off. It's floating down, it's even on the brush. We're gonna give this to the birdies as they make their nests. So after the hard brush, your horse should look decently clean. So right now, captains, barrel looks dark there's not a lot of extra hair a lot of extra dirt so after i finish the hard brush i'm going to grab the soft brush this is more for shine this is going to help spread those oils that i talked about at the intro to this video we use it in the same exact way but this can be used all over the body i should have mentioned that also the hard brush can be used on the legs but i'll demo that with this brush but you're using it in the same way. Your horse can be very pretty after you do this brush if you have a nice soft brush. Oh, this is getting a lot of his hair off too. In the spring, every brush is gonna be getting hair off. But you can also use the hard and the soft brush on your horse's legs, which you do want to groom your horse's legs. We don't want to ignore our horse's legs and be like, oh, they're fine. They're just always dirty. If we leave, dirt and oil to build up on our horse's legs, that can result in some health issues, whether it's just bacteria or fungal growth, um, oil buildup that's irritating the skin. Imagine standing in a wet field all day where you and all of your friends use the bathroom. We want to clean their legs. Sometimes we'll just hose them off, but we want to make sure that we're grooming them as well. We're not just leaving them alone. Now, after we've done that, then we really are coming down the leg and we would clean out our horse's hooves using a hoof pick. Now, Captain, like I said earlier, is 34 years old. For a horse, that is very old. <laughs> we want to make sure that he can hold a leg up while we're doing his feet. So typically his feet get done when the farrier's here, so we have help and we'll use the stall walls to help balance him. But in a situation like right now, where he's standing free, he doesn't have that support system physically that he needs, we're not gonna do his feet. Any other horse that we would be riding though, our younger guys in the herd and gals in the herd, um, we wanna always pick out their feet before we ride. The smallest little pebble getting stuck in their foot would be just as annoying as a pebble in your shoe but that's gonna have a huge impact on the way that they move, especially when you add the weight of a saddle and the horseback rider onto their back, it's gonna cause a lot of pain. So we always, always, always wanna do feet before we ride our horses. We will go over feet in another video because many people are intimidated with picking up the feet. How do you pick up the feet? What are the parts of the hoof so you know where to pick and where not to pick? That'll be a whole nother video. So we will come back to the hoof pick another time. The final thing, and I find that many, many, many people enjoy doing this part of the grooming, is the hair of the horse. So we have the mane, which is along the neck. 
the forelock, which is up here between his ears, and then we have the tail back here. Now, when we're grooming the mane, we can stand alongside the horse, we can groom all that out. But what we want to be aware of if we're grooming the forelock or the tail is that the horses have blind spots directly in front of them and directly behind them. So they almost have 360 vision, but not quite. So if you get right in front of the horse and suddenly reach out and touch their face, the horse might do one of these and smack you. They're not meaning to be cruel, but we always wanna make sure that they're aware of where we are. Same thing with behind them. We wanna to stand to the side, pull the tail to us and then brush it out. We don't wanna stand directly behind them. If the horse gets spooked and suddenly recognizes that we're behind them, we do not want to get accidentally kicked. So safety is very important. Even when we're grooming, it seems simple to groom, but we want to make sure that our feet are clear and that we're not in any blind spot. Blind, <laughs> blind spots. <laughs> that was a struggle. Um, so those are the brushes that we're using this time of year um, to get our horses ready to ride for our lessons or just to show them some loving like old Kathy here, who was a very good support system for this. Thank you, Captain. Um, so that's grooming for today and we're going to head on to our next section of the, today's lesson.